Yeah, so this is basically like being able to use a 95 pound splitting mall, because that's what this weighs, but I don't have to lift it, because the car suspension spring lifts it for me. All I have to do is move it, and you can see that's really easy. And it's just the momentum of all that weight that crashes through the wood. So it's kind of like splitting with the mall, where you want to line up with any crack you see already existing. Try to avoid the knot. It just takes a lot of the foil out of it. It always hits in exactly the same spot, so you're never having to aim it. And if you set it up right, I like putting it with a trailer full of wood needing split next to it so I can just stay upright the whole time, grab the wood, split the wood, put it right into my wood pile or another trailer that's headed to the porch. And if you get it stuck in the wood, like with a ball, if you get that stuck in the wood, you're wrestling with it, trying to get it out, or you're having to lift the whole thing and smash it down again. But with this, this is just adding more weight to here and giving it even more momentum to split. And then doing kindling, you can just move it through. Wow. A week's worth of kindling in five minutes. <laughs> I like bungeeing together like two by four cutoffs. Yeah. Just cut it one way and turn it, cut it the other way, and then unbungee it. There we go. It sure beats spending, you know, twelve hundred bucks on a low-end log sweater. It sure does. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And there's no spark plugs to change, no carburetor to get yeah. fouled up every single Hydraulic time. fluid to leak. No and... hydraulic hoses to change, no filters to change, no constant droning engine sound. And if it breaks, you can fix it because you're the one that built it to right. begin with. <laughs> the only important parts really are those three things right there. It's just a car suspension spring that are in junkyards all over the place. And the screw is an adjustable foot off of a scaffold that you can find at scaffold supply places. And then an axe head. And those are all over with busted handles. And the rest of it can be pretty well improvised with materials you can find it at uh, recycle places or steel yards. You can buy it new if you want. Um, I, I, standardized, I standardized the design to use dimensional pieces that you can get for convenience and so it's just easy to, all the dimension, you know, the decisions are made for you for the design and the dimensions and all that. Um, but you can get pretty creative on, on certain parts of it. You could use an I-beam or two seat channels welded together or whatever you can get your hands on for certain parts of it. And then when I first built it, I realized I built it backwards with the wheels over there. But you can see that that end is the light end. So when I go to move it, I have to lift the heavy end to move it around. So I'm not making the wheels work for me very much. So last week I welded together 2.0 version of the frame so that I can, this is ready to just cut the top half off of it and move it over and weld it onto that frame so that the wheels will be under the heavy end, so I'll be able to lift the tongue by hand and move it around. There's a, tra a coupler, trailer coupler on it so I can hitch up to the side-by-side -side or a pickup and drive it right over to my wood pile and go off-road with it or take it to the neighbor's property. And that's just a mobile home axle that I cut down and made shorter. It's split with a ball. It sure does, yeah. I've often been
been splitting late at night. So I'm out here at 2 a.m. You know, splitting wood, and at least I'm not waking up the neighbors with an engine going that whole time. That is nice. Plus, there's no, you know, you're not putting fuel to it or electricity. Doesn't care about conditions either. Exactly. As you can see, this has been out in the weather. <laughs> I left it rusty on purpose because I, in 2019, I featured it in the state fair here. And I put it in the vintage ag area with all the hit and miss engines and old tractors and stuff. So with it being rusty like this, I was able to sneak it in because it kind of blended in. <laughs> I didn't sneak it in. I, I got permission, but it, it fit in. Plus, this wood, I don't know, but it's obviously, you know, been dead for a while. Yeah. Some of the, um, I, I came from Missouri to here, so I couldn't pull my own wood. So I just put out on Facebook, hey, does anybody want their wood split for free? Drop it off Thursday and pick it up for, uh, Saturday, and in between I'll split it for you. Geez, you must have had a hundred so, messages. Or <laughs> yeah, yeah, eventually, once, uh, once word got out, they got... The, meat, the need was filled pretty quickly. Yeah. <laughs> so, a bunch of that first stuff I split yesterday was pretty wet, fine. And some of the bigger rounds were really long, so it was a little much. Um, but all the other stuff you see got split up really good. And we moved after, because we lived here in Spirit Lake and then in St. Mary's. But now we're in Missouri, and so dealing with hardwoods down there, when we moved down, I was curious how it would do. Yeah. Um, but I've been splitting red oak, white oak, some hickory, and it's been doing really well. I would like to have a, a wider head on it, because this is a really narrow axe head. Um, and so it can get stuck, especially in some of the really dense hardwoods, it can get stuck more. Um, so, but I wanted something that wasn't really blunt right on the tip, because then it'll bounce more. And I want to be able to do kindling, like I did, with a really thin blade. So I finally found a maul that has a really thin start, and then it widens out really quickly. So um, I bought that just to cut the handle off and weld it onto the <laughs>